Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're playing Eve in a Challenger game on my main account. I'm going to show you how I destroy a Kindred. Yet another harder matchup that a lot of people struggle with. So I'll show you how I sort of approach this game and just carry this game. It's not a high kill game, but it's just more of a winning through macro and like outplaying them. But the early game was quite nice, so... I'll just be explaining how I pulled it off. So first things first, in this new season, we're always doing 115 wards. It's insanely OP. I only just figured this out, but you want to be doing this ward because it stops the enemy jungler to invade in your bot site. Well, it doesn't stop them, but it gives you really good info because notice how they change the wall um, in the river. So you... there's no point jumping over the wall like they used to because there's no entrance to your blue buff. So everyone's going to do raptors and walk into the river. And no one's going to expect your ward, and it gives you all the information in the world. The only time it's not going to help you is if they start raptors, do red crogs, then go to your bot side through tribush. But at that point, your bot lane should have it watered. Or your bot lane... If your bot lane doesn't have it watered, that means they probably don't have prior. And then it's like, why are you pathing bot in that situation, you know what I mean? So, yeah, this ward should be always used if you're pathing like this. So, we go for raptors start here, just because we want to... Um, do leashless as well as just farm as much as possible for our first base. We're not really going to be useful this game, so we may as well just be as selfish as possible and get our big base off and see where we can get from that. So we're doing red into blue, and um, yeah, we're just scaling up, being very selfish, and just pulling off a, a very nice full clear. Since we don't see Eve, cross, I mean, see Eve, you know, I mean Kindred, we don't see Kindred cross to our jungle, we are very um, confident to put two points in Q, so we're just chilling, and we're pathing bot this game because we can pot top, sure, and impact the matchup, but the thing is, the 2v2 is very, very hard to win, so pathing down just puts me into a very favourable sort of uh, situation. Oh, I'll put some audio on so you guys can hear game noise. That's my bad. Um, yeah, so putting ourselves in the bot side because that's our strongest sort of champions. And we have bot prior. And top prior is kind of flip. And say I was top on this time, I would be able to counter gank it. But we just don't win the 2v2 just because of the nature of my champions. So, pathing away from where Kindred is probably going to go if she doesn't invade me. And also pathing to get double scuttle, or just one scuttle at least, is going to be our best bet this game. So we do scuttle here, and now we need to cross through to our top side, because our raptors and krogs are respawning. Kindred's level 3, Kindred has no flash, so maybe we can fight for the scuttle crab. I do have smite, I hold it intentionally. So that's our idea here. Mid lane gets a solo kill, but mid lane's 1 HP, so... I can't help him. He wants help, but I just can't. I look for a second charmer. If she, in case Silas is W or something, but no, don't get to help him. Just place a ward down to see what Kindred does. And now we just go find my Raptors and our Krogs. We're gonna take the base, grab Sork Shoes, go to our wolves. It's very, very set. Like what we're doing. The only reason we'd stay after Krogs is if Kindred shows bot side. Or somewhere where she can't go for grubs, since we do delay our raptors and krogs a long enough time here to allow us to be on grubs on spawn. So we're in a very great position here to adapt to two choices that Kindred can make. So we're doing our krogs. Boom, boom, boom. Grubs are coming up. Grubs are very great here to take if we're allowed to. For example, our bot lane's fighting a lot, so it's um going to make sense to... Um, take grubs here. See how I'm ready to base, but I see Kindred shows, so I adapt to that information, and we go down and take the grubs. Grubs are really good here, but Camille has Camille has the ability to move here, but I know where she is because, well, she's showing on the wave, of course, but she needs to um, push the next wave in, so I have a little time before she has free time to contest me. So I use that window as efficiently as possible, and we grab the grubs here. Very, very nice. So let's just grab Grubs. Smite it. We see Kin we're just paying very close attention. See how I'm F keying. Very good discipline here. So let's just back off. Go to our um, safe spot to base. So it's important not to over greed here and just go to our Wolves and Gromp here because we know we're going to get hit hitting our level 6 mark after Wolves and Gromp. And we don't want to have no item buy at that point. So basing here gives us Sorkshoe's Dark Seal a very, very nice recall. 
but it also puts us into a very nice position after our camps because we're going to have Sorkshu's Dark Seal plus level 6. So we're at our like strongest point early game. So this is the point where we go from a weak champion to a very strong champion early. So I hope this is making sense, guys, but that's why I'm doing this um, pathing. Well, notice how I delayed my Wolves and Gromp. So I'm just going to do Gromp into Wolves so it just uh, lines up all my camps. Like if you just draw a line, Gromp, Wolves, Raptors, Krogs, instead of unorganizing my camps it's just a bit of an efficiency thing so you want to be as efficient as possible so just little details like that are very important but yeah we're gonna hit wolves here and then we're gonna hit level six kindred showed topside on grubs so we just know where she is now and now let's move into the enemy jungler because we know kindred's gonna go to her top mark Kindra can't go into her topside jungle unless she's cheating and knows that I'm into her bot side jungle somehow, but I'm invisible, so she should be thinking I'm topside. She might go for Scuttle, and she might go to a red, so she's got two choices here. Either way, I'm going to get red, and I'll kill her, so I'm going to get two good outcomes, and paying attention to the bot lane here, it's a cannon wave, so we like to dive on cannon waves, I talked about in my ultimate eve guide. Because one, it denies more from the enemy, and also the Kenna minion can't get one shot by Seraphine. Like, the, the, she can't one shot the wave and stop the dive happening. So, I ping my Ezreal to push this wave as fast as possible, and it puts ourselves into a great sort of dive opportunity. So, unfortunately, I am not paying attention to Jenna here, so I don't get to combo her, but um, we're still able to kill her here. We do a bit of damage to Seraphine. Now, let's wait for our passive, because our passive gives us our empowered E straight away, so that's why we do that. I miss my E, unfortunately, which kills Ezreal, because he takes the tank instead of me. That's my fault, missing that Q, but it's all good. We still get a very positive outcome. Alright, so now we need to go to our top camps. We also need a base, because there's no reason just walking top side when we may as well just base there and walk there. So, that's the thought process so far. Let's grab our alternator. Kendrick could be in our top side, so I just get Silas to check it. He doesn't want to hit the sweeper, but whatever. Uh, we'll just go farm our camps. Another idea here is to get all of our camps off map while our ult's down. So that way when our ult comes back up, we're not wasting time farming our camps and we being able to look for plays very efficiently. So that's what we're going for here. Kindred could pretty much be anywhere here, but we just want to part down. All of our camps are spawning nicely for us to take off spawn, so we're being very efficient. Very high golden XP income, and yeah, we're putting ourselves in a very good spot to just be incredibly strong this game. So, where could Kindred be? She's probably going to be bot side. She'll probably check her red's gone, um, and she might clear up here, but it's hard to track her in this sort of situation, but she might play for Dragon. It's probably our easiest play, so notice what's going to happen here. Kindred shows in the bot river, which kind of shows her intent is to play for dragon here because her bot lane just crashed a wave into our turret. So, versing their champions, they're really good in open spaces because they're like, they're good like um, range champions. If they can just keep their distance from our champions, our Silas and, well like Eve to be on mainly, like, if I'm in an open area, it's hard for me to deal damage. But Silas shows top here, so this is a 3v4 small to rotate, so we don't want to fight this here. But instead, if we fight in closed spaces, then I can get to combo very, very easily, as you'll see coming up here. Instead of me trying to chase them, they walk into me. So that's why this is important detail here. And I know my damage well, I'm very, very strong. I can just Q, E, Q, auto, smite, whatever... And then we smite on the flash on the Kindred. Doesn't give her time to react to ult because she's charmed. And she isn't expecting that from us. So we're in a very, very nice spot. Very well played skirmish there. Um, so now we just need to farm our camp. Or this Krog camp. And let's base. Go top side. Farm our camps again. Spend our gold. We go for the Hextech Protobel tier 1. It's going to be a very quick um, power spike. Which is going to be just nice to have. To snowball the game faster. But two, it's quite good versus their comp. They have four ranged champions, and two of them have a dash, and then two of them have um, dodgeable abilities. The Seraphine E, the Seraphine Ult, the Jenna Q. So I can Q them, W them, whatever, 
and then Proto built to dodge it, like to the side. Just like little cool things you can do. Here I know Jenna and Kindred are coming to this gank, um, just because they died bot side, so they're gonna go top side of the base, because um, that's where Kindred's camps are up. But um, yeah, I'm just here to like escort Riven out, but then she just goes in for the play, and this is all Riven. I mean, I don't have control over the outcome, but Riven carries it. But uh, just putting myself in the right position, I predict that they're going to go topside there. So that's why I run there instead of Krugs. And now we get to grab some Grubs. And we're in a very, very fine position. So, after Grubs, we just want to go... We'll just skip Krugs just so we, our tempo isn't ruined from taking Grubs. And then, what Raptors will give us here is level 9. And our ult's also coming up. So, after Raptors, we can look for a play. But um, we need to pay attention to our teammates. Um positioning on the map so we'll see what happens here i do make a little bit of a mistake here but um we can pay attention to it and learn from it so i grab raptors and i get level nine which is a nice power spike and now i move into the enemy jungle but why is this bad look what ezreal's doing ezreal's recalling so Making this play doesn't actually achieve anything, because now he, we're not going to be pushing bot, so we don't have a move from Ezreal, and also he's not pushing the minions and denying the minions under the turrets, so that's why this play isn't very useful, but, um, I mean, we do get a bit of information, I guess, but now we know that it's pinked, and we just grab Raptors, now any skirmish is bad, we need to wait for Ezreal to look for a play, unless we can one-shot someone, and... Pay attention to Smolder's items, and that's why I don't deal any damage at all. Negatron Cloak and Merc Treads. Um, I'm crying looking at that, but... He's going to be very useless, like, damage-wise, so I don't really mind it. If he's going to put 2,000 gold into just Magic Resist, then be my guest, you know what I mean? Like, it just... Yeah, it, it's not as good as it seems. Just because we can't really kill him as efficiently... Doesn't mean he's, he's going to be far he's got, He can't farm now, so... That's why it's not great to just go magic resist instead of damage. First item, at least. So next, we're just farming our camp because our ult's down. Getting as much gold while we are at our weakest point. Very efficient. Same sort of thing. Like, I say this all the time. It's because it's all you have to do. Like, it's very simple. I don't have to overcomplicate it. Grab the Magi's there, and let's go farm our top camps, and then our ult will come up, and we can look for some more plays. Why do we want to be positioned around our strongest members? But everyone's really winning, so this is kind of a stomp, but their team's very good at, like, stalling the game out, sort of, so... Um, I'll show you guys how to end games when people don't actually give up, and, like, like they're resisting opponents, one might say. Just farm our camps, getting to our alt CD, then we can go from there quite easily. <clears throat> just stalking this kindred here, really, just trying to kill her, burn her alt if I can. The way you want to burn play vs kindred is you want to full combo her. In a situation where you're not going to lose your ult for her ult. So that way you can just kill her straight after with your ult. But you'll see what happens here. Fortunately, Riven dies there, but I've got Thresh sort of here to help me escape if I need to. But yeah, we quickly go on this Kindred here. I don't expect him to expect my damage to be so high and ult that, so that's why I went for the ult. It was a bit of a mind game, and uh, we both sort of lost it, so... Well, he won it, to be honest, but like... My ult's still a lot shorter cooldown than his is. His ult is very, very long cooldown, so I'm going to be able to one-shot him straight away as soon as my ult comes up. So the matchup's quite e even... I mean, e easy, once we are at the stage of the game, but we've won the game pretty much, getting to this point where we're 4-0, like, this, it should be a lot harder for us, Kendra, but this guy didn't use his 
pressuring skills early. I mean, it's a champion's pressuring ability. So, that wouldn't have mattered though. I would have shown you guys how to play around that. Maybe just pressuring as much as possible, stealing camps, whatever. Letting Silas hit the camps, I mean the turret, but what we should be doing here is just playing between mid and bot. But, uh, Ezreal, we're just, we're just sieging here. This is cool. Well, we need to get Dragon, we need to get Objectives, and we need to take all the turrets. So, we just use Herald to break mid there. It's hard to break mid without Herald, to be honest, just because of the nature of our champion. We're a melee champion that can't really show and hit turrets, so... Herald does that for us, so that's the way you think about Herald, is like, you want to break the tier 1s, then break the tier 2s, just like in a, uh, sort of nice, um, line. Here, Jenna walks into us, we combo her, she ults us away, and then Kindred goes just for us. We run away. And we are out of there. We kill the Kindred there, try to steal the kill for our Medjais, unfortunately we don't get that off. But now we can just do Dragon, our ult's still up so we're still very strong here. But yeah, we've pretty much won this game 6-20, to 20, but um, they don't have FF so I just want to show you guys what to do when they don't have FF, just how you macro. You need to keep trying at this point in the game because you can throw, I've done it a hundred times, I've got the painful experiences in me. Just clear our camps. Our team's on map here, so we're kind of just pressuring by being in Viz. But um, we've got all the tier two turrets now, so now we just kind of need to AFK into a Baron. Sort of thinking like, how can I take the enemy jungle camps while um getting my own, and then waiting for Baron? You don't want to overforce and throw before it. It's a big mistake a lot of people make. We're just taking the enemy camps here, setting up Baron, and then once we get Baron, we can win this game much faster. But the enemies are forced to stay inside their base, otherwise they have to be scared of me. So here, this is perfect sort of situation. Like, they have to come out of their base if they want to fight, and then that's what they do. So we get the perfect fight for ourselves. But um, here I just go to my... Krugs, because I need a bit more gold to buy double... Rod, I believe, but then I'm pretty sure I changed my mind and just decide Void Staff is better just because of the amount of MR they're stacking on Smolder and Kindred. Kindred went Merc Treads, it's probably not enough to go Void, but uh, we do it anyway. So, here, since our ult's down, we'd go farm our camps, but this is sort of an Eve specific thing because, like, they always have to be scared of us, so that's why I'm allowed to farm my camps here and get away with it in solo queue. But yeah, we just um, buy towards Void Staff. Because I think Death Cap Second would have just been better here, though. Or Banshees. I think Void Second is just never, ever good. You don't have damage with it, I've found. Like, it just doesn't give AP, like, as much as you'd like. So I think it's much more valuable, regardless, to just go for the Cap of the Death over Void Second. And uh, that's going to give you a lot more damage than void even though you got magic resist penetration but yeah baron's up so let's just i'm just farming my camps here waiting for silas to come back out on map otherwise i wouldn't be hitting my camps here i'd just be pressuring playing for baron getting vision control these sort of things but since he's dead he unfortunately trolled and died we just gotta wait for him to come back on map so that's why i'm farming my camps hope you guys are enjoying this um video would appreciate a like and subscribe on it and if you guys would like my coaching, just consider joining the Patreon. It's like a dollar a day, and you get coached literally every day. It's insane value. But, um... Yeah, so... We are...
looking to get picks and push this next waves here chase kindred out of our jungle but yeah we push this next wave because it's the both cannons so it takes the enemy a bit longer to respond it's a way to think about it and then we will Well, they're not cannons, but, like, they have to respond to this wave. So, this is, like, now we start Baron. Because, like, they have to respond to a wave. And we don't have to. Because we pushed a wave ahead. So, that's why we have a little opportunity just to Baron. Kindred's going to go both side for a mark. It's, like, her little trade. People like to trade as much as they can. It's a good habit to be in. So, we've got Baron. Now, we need to play um 4-1. We need to play two lanes. Riven or Silas, whoever's better in the 1v1, should be going into the side lane. And then the rest of us sort of siege, and then we do two lanes at once, and we end the game that way. Uh, bad ult by me. Didn't need an ult, but um, we win this fight. Now we should try to get as many inhibs as possible. We only get one kill, unfortunately. Unless Ezreal, I'm not sure. Yeah, Ezreal's just stomping them but for some reason we're not pushing two lanes here but this is my job now to just go do that bot lane or i can just farm the jungle and do dragon both is fine but if i want to close the game out as quickly as possible then i should just do the um lane in the just push the bot lane because that'll help us get the next in there but they're respawning so it's kind of hard but it's kind of ruben's fault there just for not pushing the second lane in the bottle top just to help us close out the game, getting hips faster. Because every time we don't use a wave with Baron, we're running out of time, right? So that's why it's kind of urgent. Here I can't base here because my whole team isn't basing. You need to base with your team, so this is a bit of a mistake as well. I should be base. I should be basing with my team instead of just basing randomly um, without my team. Because now my team's going to base in the future, and then I'm not going to base with them because I've already based. So it's just going to be like I've got nothing to do for a while because I want to be playing around my team. See how they're all on the map, and this is just a consequence of basing. But um. It doesn't really matter though, because Kindred dies, and then... Well, it does matter that my Silas ends up dying, I think. Or he lives on 1 HP. Wow. But yeah, I should be with my team playing two lanes and ending the game. In a good spot here, otherwise than that, we just gotta wait for our team to come back on map, so what we can do during that time is just farm at the camps and then look for a pick after or something like that. But yeah, we should be playing two lanes here. Four people in one, the bot lane, and then, well, three, one, one. So, I'm in one lane, or like, I'm in mid. I'm just Baron minioning, Baroning the minions mid, and then hovering between the top and mid in their base, I mean the top and bot. And then four peep, three people pushing one lane, and then Riven pushing one. So that's the macro here. So three one one or one one three, whatever, it doesn't matter. But instead, we're doing solo queue shenanigans, and we aren't putting ourselves in a situation to end the game fast. Would we just charm the smolder here to pressure him off of the bot turret and put ourselves in a situation to get? Um, here, I'm doing the right thing, but it should be one person in top lane, not two and two. But we're doing... I shouldn't show you here either, but... Yeah, you're getting the point. Like, we just got to close out the game slowly. Don't want to over-greed. They do have a very good 5v5 comp, and they do scale well. So it's important not to throw our lead. See, this is the problem with playing 2-1-2. Is... They can just go kill those guys and we don't have enough pushing power to threaten an end or something like that. See, if they come for us as four, Riven can flank. Um, but if it's two to two, then no one can flank. And then we can't also fire back either because 
If they go for Riven, she can run away. She has lots of dashes. But if they go for Riven and Silas, then Silas is just going to die. And Riven will probably try help and just int as well. So, yeah, that's like the mistake in the macro there that made this game a bit harder to close out. And just kind of slowed it down a bit. But, yeah. We just got to wait for Silas and Riven to come back on map. And then we can close this game out. So I'm just farming my camps, getting double rod in base. And then we will look to close the game out very efficiently. Go top, get the top in here. Just farming my camp to get level 11 here. And then red to give everyone red because I'm a nice guy like that, of course. And now let's go group with our team. And we can play for Baron here, but we can also play for the two inhibs. The mid lane inhibs respawning. It's nice to have a plugin that tells us when the inhibs respawn. I think it's Blitz or Porifest, so a lot of people ask. So there's your info on that. Grab the inhib there, then this inhib's about to respawn, so I want us to stay. We may as well get it now, then instead of going to Baron, then back to the inhib. That's my thought process there. But yeah, we shouldn't be playing just all mid. We should be pushing the wave still and playing off the waves. Instead, we have to 5v5, and that team's really good at 5v5ing. And uh, I'm not really a champion in that situation, so that's what's the mistake there. But other than that, it's a sort of right idea to go for the inhib there. And we sort of just win this fight slowly and end the game. Jokes. Well, Ezreal wins the fight for us. Ezreal smurfs it. And we end the game, luckily our team smurfs it, but yeah. The macro was there, and I explained it, so hope you guys learned from that. Hope you guys learned from the video in general, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, peace, peace.